Money will silence those reports. You put it next to your brain, it kills your brain cells. Problem is you guys, you like to put it here. You know? I tell you, something's gonna die. <laughs> no, 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 Pastor. I put it in my back pocket. Same thing, same area. You know? <laughs> See, so now you want to keep it away from you, you know, and use, uh, what do you call that? Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Yeah, but that has the same thing. See, we worry about all these things. You know what? And then chickens, same thing, pumped with hormones, antibiotics, and all that stuff like that. So now everybody's afraid to eat chicken, at least the wing part. Take communion. Say grace. Cleanse all the impurities and eat buffalo wings in Jesus' name. See, I mean, we're so scared of so many things. One time, Elisha, you know, there was food. They, they were eating some vegetables called gourds. And uh, they didn't realize that the gourds that they got were poisonous. So they started cooking it, and somebody got sick. And they said, there's poison in the pot. So Elisha, what did he do? He got some meal or flour, okay, which is grain, which is bread. And he put it inside, and there was no more poison. Not because of the flour, but because of what it represented, grain, wine, and oil. And it... it neutralized the poison don't be afraid to eat enjoy your food amen? amen that's probably the best news you heard today you know <laughs> enjoy your food I tell you that's good news <laughs> now Jacob also was a covenant man Jacob was a covenant man Jacob remember was being cheated by his employer uh, because he said you know what I love your daughter so much Rachel I want to marry her and I says, okay, fine. Work for me seven years. That's, what, that's the dowry. Work for me seven years, she's yours. He worked seven years. The Bible says he was so in love, it was like days that just passed. Days. Seven years went like days, very quickly. You know? Finally, uh, wedding day. They get married. They go into the tent. Of course, night. It was dark, right? And uh, they do their thing. Next day he wakes up, it was not Rachel. It was someone else. It was Leah. And he says, well, why did you do this to me? I didn't want to marry Leah, your other daughter. I wanted Rachel, the other daughter. He says, oh, you know, in our land, there's a custom. You can't marry the younger one unless the older one gets married. You know? So, naisan siya. You know, that's why today, we say you may now lift the veil. That's to check that she's the, really the one. Okay? <laughs> Otherwise, you go home, you get a heart attack. You know? <gasps> Sino ka? You know? So you, you always lift the veil first. Before you go home, lift the veil. While the pastor is still there, so we can tear up the paper. Say, so, no, this didn't work. Wrong woman. Diba? So now he says, okay, tell you what. I'll give you Rachel, but you work for me another seven years. So he worked for another seven years, and then uh, Rachel was there. So now he had that. The thing is, he kept on, Laban kept on changing his um, wages. That's why he could not get rich. So he said, you know what? Tell you what. I don't like this thing. You're always changing my wages. I want to get rich also. You know, so tell you what. He said, okay, name me your wage. I'll give it to you. And he said, okay. From among all your livestock, goats and sheep, everything that is spotted and speckled shall be mine. And Laban was thinking, this guy's a fool. Almost all my goats are solid colors, either white or brown or black, but not mixed. So I'm going to lose very little if I pay that to him. He says, fine, this is a good deal. Fine, you can have all that. So he only had a few. But you see, he's a covenant man. So he said, Lord, since all the spotted and speckled are mine, every, every goat and every sheep that gives birth, let it be spotted and speckled. And they were all spotted and speckled. To the point where even the face of Lab and the Bible says, changed. He says, how did this happen? How can the solid colors give birth to spotted and speckled? So he says, tell you what, from now on, all the spotted and speckled are mine. He says, fine, Lord, you heard. Now, from now on, let all be solid colors. And the all solid colors were born. So it all went to him again. They got so picked on, they kicked him out. Because he became richer than his employer. You know why? He's a covenant man. You cannot cheat a covenant man and think you'll get away with it. A covenant man always ends up on top. 
And you know what? That's you guys. You always end up on top. Amen? Amen. I need to hurry up. Genesis 34. Now therefore come, let us make a covenant, you and I. This is now with Laban and Jacob. See that? And let it be a witness between you and me. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. Then Jacob said to his brethren, gather stones. And they took stones and made a heap and they ate there. You have a covenant meal again. Another covenant meal. See, every time you take communion, it's a covenant that you are reenacting with God himself. Saying, you know what? I promise to bless you. And what he's saying is, I promised. And so you are blessed. You are blessed. And after that, Laban never bothered Jacob again. Look at this. In Psalm 23, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. See, everyone's fighting, you're eating. And you don't even have to fight your way to the lechon. There will always be enough. Always be enough. You anoint my head with oil. See, the table there speaks of communion. That's the context. My cup runs over. See, you have grain, wine, oil. My cup runs over. In other words, umaapaw na blessing. Surely, look at this, after the communion, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Forever. Forever. Communion is a covenant meal. And my last point. Communion is a way for the life of Christ to flow freely in and through you. The life of Christ. You know why? Because of this. Watch this. Leviticus 17, 11. Let's read it together. What does it say? For the, is where? The life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. That means the life of that human being is in his blood. That's why when you drink the blood of Jesus through communion, you are drinking in his life. See, notice doctors, watch, huh? When you can't seem to know, when, when they can't seem to know what's wrong with you, what do they say? Blood test. You know why? The blood doesn't lie. You might be feeling good, feeling well, sharp, strong, but the blood will tell you what's wrong if there's something wrong. Because the disease will also be in the blood. The nice thing is, with Christ, there is no disease. But you see, you're, you are drinking his life. Now let's talk about his life for a while. His life, in his life, he never knew sickness. He healed sickness, but he never got sick. When you drink in his life, that's what you're drinking. Jesus walked in blessing. That's what you're drinking. Why? Because the life of that flesh, of that creature, is in the blood. That's why when you get into a covenant, blood covenant, right? Like with Sina, who's these guys? Lapu-Lapu and all those guys are that, right? They slit and they mix blood. Now your life is mine. Life is in the blood. Your life is mine. Sometimes what they do is they slit, they put some drops in a goblet, they drink a bit, you drink a bit. Now your blood is in me and my blood is in you. We are now brothers, we are one. And that is binding. That's binding. Now, when Jesus said, this is my blood, you drink it, now his blood is inside you. That means you have his life inside you. That means whatever is, all of his victories become your victories. Whatever is possible for him becomes possible for you. It's his life now that you're, Galatians 2.20 says, that I know I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. I no longer live. But the life that I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who died for me and loved me. See, I no longer live. It's now His life that is in me. And that's what you and I need to remember. That's why sickness has no right to stay in 